The greatest feature that's sneaking under everybody's radar, a computer that can breathe, and NVIDIA has some shrinkage problems. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And in today's video, we are not really gonna be covering the CES announcements from AMD and NVIDIA, primarily with regards to the CPUs and GPUs because we released a whole dedicated video on that yesterday. So if you wanna watch that, you can check it out right up there by clicking the card in the top right hand corner. There's some stuff I didn't cover in yesterday's video that we're gonna to cover today, but I wanna talk about something that I haven't really seen a whole lot of news out. Let's talk about, it's about Intel's new feature called Perfut, all right? You never heard of it because, man, nobody's talking about it because it also only applies in select limited scenarios, but I actually think it's a pretty cool piece of technology that we need to know more about. So there's a Linux build that's popping up from Intel's new open source project called Perfut, the platform firmware runtime and telemetry drivers, which allow it so that when you do a BIOS update, you actually don't have to restart the system. When we talked about how Intel might be working on this and that might come out at some point, but now there's actually drivers that are starting to roll out for it. However, do note that this is a server exclusive feature at the current time, and it's not really for Linux desktop environments, as well as the fact that there's not a whole lot of specifications surrounding whether or not we know if you need to have Intel specific hardware in order to pull this off, but it is at least an intriguing concept where you will never have to shut down your computer again. Obviously, because it's in such a limited capacity at this point, it not being available on Windows or being available to regular consumers kind of decreases the excitement a bit, but I do actually enjoy this because I think it opens up the BIOS update environment to a lot more consumers if they don't have to go through actually entering their BIOS. If they could do it from a desktop environment without having to restart, that could potentially create a better workability for general end users, which, you know, there might be some superiority complex out there being like, well, if you don't know how to do it, maybe you shouldn't do it. But there's security updates that come with BIOS updates. There's better support for RAM that happens. And some people just might not be comfortable with doing it. And so rolling out something like Perfut then allows you to have more accessibility to the average consumer. I'm actually kind of a fan of it. Let me know what you think of Perfut down below in the comments. I'm gonna let you know what I think about Intel's i5-12400 all right, this wasn't announced by them at CES yesterday on the main stage, but it's out there and people have reviews. Uh, Tom's Hardware posting their 12400 review showing that it's just, it's a great chip, especially when you compare it to the previous 11900K does really well. You compare it to the 5600X and 5600G, does really well. And in fact, actually beats AMD's 5600X by roughly 2%, despite costing about $100 less. 5600X going for $300 over on Newegg right now, the 12400 is going for 210. And then when you consider power draw, as well as other things that Intel has implemented, the 12400 does seem to be a pretty good mid-tier chip that you could potentially consider checking out. We'll leave links in the video description in case you want to check that out. And I want to check out my case breathing air all right, I wanna see it aspirating the environment that's going on. And that's exactly what CyberPower PC wants to bring to us. They're Kinetic Series gaming PCs that have these foldable flaps that make it so that it can breathe open air so that it can actually change its front panel on the front depending on how much airflow it actually needs, depending on what process it's doing. It depends on a whole lot, but that thing looks gosh dang cool. I absolutely love it. CyberPower PC saying that it reads your PC temperatures every five seconds and it'll open and close different vents in order to allow different amounts of airflow through. But despite the fact that we've been getting the same perforated mesh cases that have tempered glass on the side, this seems like a breath of fresh air in a, that static, you know, PC case environment that's out there. CyberPower PC saying that it should be coming out sometime later this year in their Kinect series pre-builds in case you want that, but they're also gonna be considering whether or not to release this as a standalone $250 case, which is a lot of money, but they're say they might do it if there's sufficient demand. So if you have demand for it, demand it down below in the comments, and maybe they'll see it and you could actually request it. In case CyberPower PC is watching this video, I would like to see this review sample. I make video, I want, I want Kinetic. 
I don't know why I started talking like that when I got to my sales pitch, but boy, howdy, there it is. But in case you don't want to spend $250 on a PC case, well, let me help you out with UFD deals, the hottest tech deals out on the internet, my friends. Don't forget, we relaunched the website in case you want the newest tech deals out there. It kind of went through a lull over the holidays. I had to reconfigure a few things, get some teammates to help me out with making sure that all of the deals that are on the website are still active and kind of curating that list. We fixed all of that and now we're back, okay? Cheap PC case Corsair 4000D going for $55 right now after rebate. That's on top of the $20 savings that's there and then a $20 rebate, nearly half off right there. The Intel i7-12700KF, in case you want Alder Lake right now, is currently going for $380 after a $15 promo code. In case you're looking for a decent gaming monitor, Dell's 27 inch 1440p 144 hertz HDR monitor is currently going for $300 over on Best Buy. The last time I talked about this, it was only going for $330. So that's another $30 off where it's now $150 off from its normal price of $450. So you can check all of that out at the links in the video description. Now let's check out Crypto Stonk, see how the crypto world's doing Bitcoin. Up a quarter of a percent to be at $46,259. Not looking so hot overall, below a $900 billion market cap. Ethereum up 2.5% to sit at $3,800. And Dogecoin up a quarter of a percent as well to sit at 16.9 cents. The meme stonks, however, having a rough for time. GameStop down 4% right now to be at 146.65. AMC collapsed in 4.3% to sit at $25.38. Just not looking quite good for AMC at the moment, but it is looking good for the James Webb Space Telescope because NASA officially announcing that the 70-foot sun shield has successfully deployed, which will allow it to make sure that the temperature on the sensors are actually really cold and that the hot side of the telescope stays hot. That way it doesn't translate over to the IR receivers because heat can be seen in infrared and so we wouldn't get good pictures if there is heat. So that's what the sun shield's for and it's successfully deployed. So far, essentially, as far as I'm aware, everything that's supposed to go right with the JWST has gone right. It took us a long time to get there. It launched on Christmas and now it's doing well. Good job, JWST. Good job, NASA. Proud of all you engineers. And HyperX engineering a headset that you don't ever really have to charge because they're announcing their Cloud Alpha wirelesses, which are supposed to have a 300 hour our battery life go on sale for $200 in February, which is a hefty penny to pay, but for the convenience of not having to charge it, even though if you leave it on for two straight weeks, that's only when you need to charge it. Okay, you could forget to turn these things off and still have battery life. I love that. I don't know if I'm gonna drop $200 on it, but considering there's other companies like Corsair and their Virtuoso that go for like 230 bucks, that's honestly not a bad deal. Something else that I'm never gonna pick up, but I just wanna talk about because I think it's really cool. Hisense announcing some new TVs at CES, specifically a 4K, 120 Hertz, 2000 nit mini LED TV. I would love that, $3,200. Not, not go for that late summer 2022, but really good specs on that spec list. And in case you like some TVs with some video games or you want to play some video games on your TV, Nvidia announcing that in addition to GeForce Now being available on LG TVs as previously announced, it will also become available on Samsung TVs. However, only in a 1080p format, you won't be able to do it at 4K because you're not paying enough, all right? You need to either have an Nvidia Shield TV, which you have to pay Nvidia for the hardware for that, or you need to upgrade to the freaking 3080 plan. No base level Premier Access TV stuff. No, you give Nvidia more money or you get 1080p. That's how this works. You want good Nvidia gaming? Stop being broke, okay? And I wish I wasn't so broke because Alienware announced a 1440p ultra wide monitor that's OLED. Whew. It doesn't have good HDR, it's only HDR 400, but 3440 by 1440 OLED curved display makes me a little happy. I would love to see this. Going on sale March 29th. And what's going on sale is Nvidia's gaming monitors, their esports monitors, which like, I'm not an esports gamer. I don't run in those circles, so maybe this makes a little bit more sense to some other people, but they announced 27 inch 1440p 360 hertz gaming monitors, which on the surface sounds really cool. It can improve aiming by up to 3% over traditional 24 inch 1080p monitors, okay? That's a decent spec list, but one of the features that they mentioned during the keynote was that it could shrink down to a 25 inch display. And when I heard that, I was just like, so they're gonna sell 27 inch and 25 inch displays? To which they then went off to showcase, no, your monitor will shrink 
All right, you ready to see this? Okay, it goes from a 27 inch 1440p to increasing the bounding box so that it's only 25 inch. You lose, it just increases the black bars. How is this a feature? It doesn't, can't your computer already do? Don't monitors already have like display areas? Can't you decrease the display area? I'm, I'm confused as to how this is a feature. It's kind of neat. Does it really like, would it make a huge difference to go from 27 inch 1440p to 27 inch 1080p? Like, why couldn't you just keep the extra display result? Why couldn't you just keep the extra inches? Why does it? Why does Nvidia want to cut off two inches? That's like all of it. What's going on? I don't know. If you're into esports, make some sense of this to me down below in the comments, please, because I don't get it. And you're not gonna get me anymore today because this episode of Hot News is finished. Thank you so much for tuning in to the hottest tech news that's on the internet for your breakfast. I'll see you tomorrow for another episode. My friends, goodbye.